multi-billion dollar question. I, I was going to say it's everything, but I would say it's like 80% of the consideration, right? Because um, I invest in the field of med tech and, and medical devices, right? Some of these devices take years to get to FDA approvals. It's multi-million dollar clinical trials. And if you don't have an IP, um, anybody can go ahead and replicate your product. I mean, information gets out very quickly. It's very hard to keep things secure and safe and, and you know, closed in, in an environment like today. Um, so IP is very, very important. In fact, sometimes what investors will do is uh, when they talk to uh, a founder who, who's filed three or four really good IPs around the product, what we also advise them is to go and start filing IPs to block other players from getting close to your product in the future, because you need a runway of eight to 10 years sometimes to be able to get to good amount of sales for you to make money and all of that, right? And in that context, having a really great IP lawyer is very, very important. I think a great IP lawyer can make or break your IP strategy. Um, and, um, and, and it's money well spent. It's, it's really something that should be part of your game. It's not an afterthought. If it is an afterthought, then it's a mistake, I think. Obviously, it changes by the field you're in, but in the field where I invest in healthcare, it's very, very critical. It's harder to do uh, IP management for health tech platforms. It's easier to do it in devices, but it's not impossible. We've got IP between ourselves and SaaS, and so that's been obviously, you know, a driver of, of the CAPS, the Continuous Analytical Processing System uh, project and platform. You know, and that's that's a huge element just to make sure that you know, both organizations, obviously SaaS is a multi-billion, I'm a, I'm a three-year-old company, but, you know, that uh, IP protection not only lends itself to protecting our company, but really protecting the future of both companies because the aspect of SaaS, they're going to be looking to go uh, public over the next year or so. And so the IP that we would have between the two companies uh, and the scalable platform that we have that can go global pretty easily, um, you know, that's that's a huge benefit. And again, something that lends itself to my company from an investor standpoint and lends itself to my company from a Uh, let's call them families. We've got this AI around cancer and potentially other immune-related disorders. We've got some IP out of Harvard around a blood test. Uh, we have some IP out of, uh, that's for uh, breast cancer. We have some IP out of the uh, University of Leipzig around uh, Alzheimer's blood test. Um, and then we have uh, some IP around the use of this protease, the 3CL, both for diagnosing and treating um, COVID and yeah, if you still have COVID, which becomes long COVID. So, you know, for us, it's very important to attract investment. You know, people like to know that you have a proprietary position. Um, and certainly with the FDA, um, if you want to get in the orange book, you also have to have intellectual property that's relevant. Um, so there are a myriad of regulatory and investment reasons why it's important to focus on IP. And, you know, IP obviously can be very complicated, especially in the diagnostic space. So we we like to work in areas where we have unique data sets that, you know, gives us a, a strategic advantage. So IP, does IP also help you uh, raise money? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And does it also help you in getting acquired, getting health tech companies acquired? Absolutely. That's, you know, that's what people want to buy. They want to buy a proprietary position in a market. Interesting. So it's very, very important. In, and, and for any investor who's been uh, investing in this space, obviously, you know, I mean, there is a leeway. If you are at seed stage, you are a big seed stage uh, startup, you would uh, get some leeway from your investor that, yeah, I mean, you would probably in early stage, you don't have money to file some of these things. But uh, having an IP is very, very important. Maybe not doing a filing or, you know, going into some other markets and doing those filings should be okay. But uh, as you grow and as you start hitting some of these markets, it's become very, very important for you to uh, start concentrating on that part as well. And obviously, you know, at the time when you have money, you should definitely go and file. So uh, the 
uh, early entrepreneurs would uh, probably be okay to obviously build the IP, but not, you know, doing, let's say, a pilot, that's fine. Uh, but late entrepreneurs, definitely, you know, there is uh, a need uh, for them to have this, uh, specifically the Um, I think that, you know, I really like the idea of IP as it originated, which is, uh, you know, it's there to, you know, especially in the, I know about the U.S. Uh, side of things, which is, which is this idea that um, it's there to, you know, add to the human knowledge, let's say, in the very beginning, I, that it's there to, so you can put uh, things out there, protect it for, for when it's needed, um, but uh, but uh, adding to the human knowledge because that knowledge is there. It's not lost if the the, the creator dies, the inventor dies, all these kinds of things. Um, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we we spun out from Google, so we have Google IP, and then mm -hmm. soon after that, uh, Horaeus, uh, a, a medical company in Germany with billions in revenue. They saw that spin out and said, hey, we want to you know, help you as well. So they spun technology in and then we bought Nisos. And, and so, you know, that's, you know, three different uh, portfolio sets that had corporate attorneys writing very um, uh, well-written patents and then also lots of uh, published patents. So one of the um, challenges, though, is really sorting through that. Um, you know, every week I'm getting an email from from our IP firm. Uh, saying, okay, this one's now an examination, you know, here's the examiner rebuting these claims, you know, what do you think? 